before I start, I would like to respectfully ask people in the gallery and people in the Capitol to uh, watch your democratic process with respect. This is the legislative body in the Senate of the state of California. And, you know, this issue over immunizations has pressed me to major pressures of my own profession of being a pharmacist and has pushed me to the limits of being an elected official and balancing the two. You know, I think it's unfortunate if any of us ever vilify people that want to have a voice here in the state capitol. And I've heard over the years that I've been here when people want to have parental rights over their children's health and are labeled extremists, labeled anti-vaxxers, when there is nothing stronger, my friends, than wanting the best for the health and welfare of your child. Now, I know enough about medicine to be dangerous. Uh, there are those of you that have alleged on the floor that I, I shouldn't even be talking about legal issues because I'm not a lawyer and therefore my comments or my opinions uh, should be disregarded. Yet I welcome people to debate me and discuss the merits of medicine and drugs. Let me just say a few things. When we were considering SB 277, it was at the time I had my first grandchild. And it was determined at my granddaughter's one year birthday that she was autistic. We didn't know to what extent. It happened at about the same time that she received the MMR vaccine. Coincidentally, the symptoms of autism show at approximately the same time. And I had a, a challenge with my own children when SB 277 came on, and I was a co-author of 277 because I've not only learned about immunizations, I've taught about them at the university level. But it created some significant friction between my children and myself. And let me say this, they, do, they call medic, giving medical services a practice. And the reason why they call it a practice is because it's not perfect. We do the best that we can to heal people and prevent them of diseases that are minor and diseases that are very serious. But here's what we do know. We know that a human immune system is not fully mature until a child is 12 to 14 years old. And while I believe, and this is only me speaking with no scientific backup, as I look and see the incidence of autism uh, in the state and in the country, is that with the immunization schedules that we see, I think that the schedule that we give these immunizations may be too onerous, if you will, may be too overwhelming for a child's immune system to cause what's called an autoimmune reaction. Now, what is an autoimmune disease? Many of you have heard of things like lupus and ulcerative colitis and Graves' disease, fibromyalgia, vasculitis, rheumatoid fever. We're still learning about the immune system and how it works. And a lot of these TV commercials that you see about drugs that treat things like ulcerative colitis and rheumatoid arthritis are drugs that try to temper our own immune system from attacking normal cells and tissues within the human body. So we have a Centers for Disease Control 
and they monitor drugs along with the Federal Drug Administration, and they, they print adverse reactions that happen when some populations are immunized. But you have to understand that not every adverse reaction is printed in the CDC guidelines. And that's where I think that the patient and physician relationship becomes something that is important and something that certainly should be respected. So here we are today. And we always want to make sure that our citizens have the right to express themselves. It's democracy. But as we have seen SB 714 come to the forefront, I think it's going to be a mockery of democracy if we allow this bill to not have one public hearing. The content of SB 714 is a material change to the legislation that we have previously enacted. Members, let's go all the way back. All the way back to 2015, when SB 277 was debated in this legislature. I know because I was a proponent. One of the reasons I supported the measure was because my good colleague from Sacramento promised that with its passage, medical exemptions would be allowed and honored. But don't take my words for it. Take the senator's words. On April 15, 2015, my friend, the senator from San Francisco, released a fact versus myth press release in which he says that it is false that, I quote, SB 277 would prevent children who need them from receiving exemptions. He then followed up by saying SB 277 leaves to the discretion of doctors when a child requires a medical exemption from required vaccine, vaccinations. Californians were told at the time and time again that exemptions would be allowed. The senator and this legislature, included myself, including myself, made a promise, but colleagues, that promise is not being kept. Even our illustrious governor saw the flaws in SB 276 and insisted on amendments or he would basically threaten to not sign or potentially veto the legislation. And that brings us to here today right now, voting on this bill that's the equivalent of passing legislation in the dark of night in the middle of the day. Why do I say that? Well, to begin, SB 714 was not and never will be heard in public because of the waiving of Rule 29-10. And what does the Rule 29-10 say? It protected this institution and it protected the citizens of the state of California that if a bill was to be gut and amended, which I believe is an abuse of the legislative process, that at least it would be a public hearing so the public could weigh in on a bill that they support or a bill that they oppose. However, as the saying goes, rules are meant to be broken, and this legislature has sure taken that saying to heart. Joint Rule 29-10 was waived, and our constituents were never given the opportunity to formally voice, the, voice their opinions on SB 714, what are we afraid of? We already know what the outcome of the vote is going to be with this legislature. Why not give the constituents, many of whom drove all night long, to come to this capital so that their voice could be heard, so that their legislature and their capital will tell them, we don't want to hear from you. We don't care what you have to say. We're coming on the floor, we're going to vote the way we are told and the way we feel we're going to vote on this issue, whether you agree with us or disagree with us. And to see my friends in the capital of the state of California, where the left has always talked about tolerance and acceptance and differing opinions, I have to see this morning that not only a mother, but a grandmother 
is cuffed in the front of the Capitol and is arrested because they want to exhibit their, sec their First Amendment rights. Just a few hours ago, SB 714 moved to the assembly floor and here it is on the Senate floor. This bill is being voted on without ever being heard through the public hearing process, stifling any citizen from commenting for or against the measure. Colleagues, public hearings matter. They may not seem to by some members here, but they matter to the people. They matter to the open process this legislature pretends to support. They matter to the integrity this legislature seems to be doing everything possible to call into question. The public deserves a chance to voice their opinion on all measures that pass through this House. Some in this legislature might not think listening to their constituents is necessary. Some may not even want to hear what their people think, but just because you disagree with the public doesn't mean that their voices should be silenced and ignored. Not only is it bad business, it's undemocratic. And even worse, I would say it's a mockery of democracy. You know, my friends, I sat through a very long hearing in the Health Committee when we heard SB 276, and I was the chairman. And I chose to give the author a lot of respect and in reserving my opinions for the floor and giving him an honest and earnest chance to pass his bill. But I have to be very honest with you. There was a couple thousand people that came, but they didn't come alone. They came with their vaccine injured children. And when I saw the morbidity of what vaccinations can do to people, you have to wonder these people have very good points to be concerned if their children, if their child had an anaphylactic reaction, had permanent brain damage to immunization, would you want your grandchildren to be immunized if it's a family history of an adverse reaction that you don't know could happen to a second child in that same family? I became very empathetic when I saw not one, not two, we're talking dozens if not over a hundred of severely injured kids. Now, I believe that these injuries are rare, but they happen. And every parent has the right to be concerned about the health and welfare of their children. Now, let's just quickly get back to exemptions. Let's assume that the status quo were to continue. Yes, you would still see pockets of immunization less than 95%, but if you allow the exemption process to continue as it has. My friends, less than 1% of the children that are immunized in this state would be given exemptions. That's not near enough to take us below a 95% herd immunization. So why are we picking a fight with thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of parents wanting to protect their children in a system that works, in a system that was promised to be implemented a certain way only to have the carpet pulled out from underneath them. I can't tell you how it hurts me when I visit my son and my daughter-in-law and I see my six and a half year old autistic granddaughter who wears a diaper who has never had a conversation with her parents or me. When I tell my granddaughter, I love you, I would give a million dollars to hear my granddaughter say, I love you, Grandpa. And I'm hoping that through time, that with technology and, and therapies, that my six and a half year old autistic granddaughter will lead a, a good and productive life in some way. It also kind of reminds me of a cousin when I was growing up. My cousin was named Larry, and Larry was a little bit different. He was a little bit slow. And I asked my mom and dad, you know, what's with Larry? And they said, well, he was born and he had some brain damage when he was born, and we're hoping for good things for him. And I have to kind of give a shout out because it was President John F. Kennedy that put a lot of these people that had brain injuries to work. And my cousin Larry, may God rest his soul, worked for the post office as one of their greatest employees in the San Fernando Valley. 
So my friends, I plead with you, I empathize with you, this shouldn't be a partisan issue. We shouldn't be vilifying parents that are only accused of wanting their children to be healthy. Why would any parent want to not immunize their children against a disease like measles that could kill their children and with the overwhelming fear that they have that the cure could be worse than the disease itself? So, for the sake of transparency and in the sake of process, for the sake of democracy, and in the sake of this institution, and to give parents in California the peace of mind that they can exert their parental rights to protect the health of their children, I am asking you and I'm begging you, please vote no on SB 714.